So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I lead somebody to the Lord. Now listen, you don't have to do it the exact way I do it. There's a million different ways to lead somebody to the Lord, okay? Uh, but you take this and you use your own method, you know, but this is just how I do it. And this is not the only way to do it. Now, the scenario that we're going to do here, this is a cold knock. I'm going up to his house and I'm talking to him. I've never met him before in my life. If you can give the gospel to, the, to a stranger, you can give a gospel to your coworker. You can give a gospel to your neighbor. You can give the gospel to your friends and family. So we're going to go through this first part. Then I'm going to stop and say a few things. And then we'll go through the plan of salvation. So what I do is I just go up and knock and open. He opens the door and say, hey, hey, hey my name is doing good. My name is uh, Brett. I'm from Rocky Point Baptist Church. Uh, how are you doing today? Good. Okay, well, good. Well, listen, we're just out in your area inviting people to church and uh, meeting new people. Do you have a church you go to? Uh, yeah. Okay, where do you go to church at? Um, over there. Oh, over there? Oh, hey, you're, 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 you're pastor's, your pastor's pastor so-and-so, ain't it? Yeah, I think that's his name. Yeah, yeah, that's a, I mean, I met him. He, he's a good guy. Oh, so-and-so goes to church over there before. I, my grandpappy knew him. And so, well, good, good. I, you know, I'm, I'm, listen, we're not out looking to take people from their church. We're just looking for people who don't have a church they go to. Let me give you a, a track from our church. And it's got our information on. If we can ever do anything for you, um, come give us. If, if you're ever not having services, we want you to come and come give us a visit. But you know what? Going to church is important, but the most important thing is if you know where you spend eternity. So before I go, let me ask you one question. If you die a good day, are you 100% sure you go to heaven, or do you think you'd have some doubt about it? Um, I think I would go to heaven. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Do you, do you think you know 100% sure you're 100% sure you go? You know, the Bible actually says that we can know 100% that we know that we have eternal life. Do you mind if I take just a few minutes and show you just a couple scripture verses? That way you can know 100% that you're on your way to heaven. You got, you got a couple minutes? Okay. Now let me stop here. Now I want you to notice some things. Uh, one thing is when I asked him where he went to church... He said, yes, I go over so-and-so. Then just start talking. Oh, that church is over on such-and-such such road. That, you know, just bring something you can talk about. Uh, compliment the flowers. on the. Just find, find something. Hey, you got a, a MSU uh, mailbox. Yeah, I, I like them too. Something. All right. Now, the other thing, if he said, if he would have said that he didn't go to church anywhere, I'd have been... Well, hey, you're just the person I'm looking for. I'm out here looking for people that don't go to church. Let me tell you where I go to church. And so that's what you do. And then you, the, the, the main question is you're getting to the question. The question is, if you die today, are you 100% sure you go to heaven? Or do you think you would have some doubt about it? They're either going to say no, I don't know. Or they might even say yes. But if you're still a little unsure, you can probe that a little bit. Okay, yes, how, how do you know you're going to heaven? Then he says, oh, well, I've lived a good life. Oh, well, I was baptized when I was a kid. Well, this means you can push a little bit further. This is a Bible track. Now, we've got some tracks back there. I want to make these for this church. I've been busy. I have not had a chance to make them. I'm going to make them. I like the one-carded postcard. I like it's got our information on one side. It's got the gospel on the back. Um, I, I like this type of track. So even if I give him this track, and, and can I share a few scriptures with you? No, I really don't have time. Okay, thank you. Have a good day. What's he got in his hand? He's got the gospel. So even if I don't have an opportunity to give him the gospel, he still has the gospel in his hand. Okay, now uh, this is the point where I lead him through the plan of salvation. Now, this is how I do it. Now, in a perfect world, he would have a track and I would have a track, but I could only find one. So we're just going to go with this. Okay. And so, you know, the, I use the Roman roads of salvation, Romans road. This is how I lead somebody to the Lord. All right. Well, l let me show you some scripture. So the first thing you hear says is we're all sinners. Okay. So that's the first thing. Now, Romans uh, three ten says, there is none righteous, no, not one. So that means everybody, the Bible says that everybody in the whole world is a sinner. I'm a sinner. 
you're a sinner, our parents are sinners, the Pope's a sinner, Mother Teresa's a sinner, everybody in the whole world's a sinner. Why well, it says right here in Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So God is here. So God's standard is absolute perfection. God is perfect. In fact, when God gave us this world, it was a perfect world. But man came in and sinned and we messed it up. And because we've sinned and because we've missed them, sin just means to miss the mark. And because we've broken God's law, now we fall short of his glory. And the Bible says that we're all sinners. Now, whether I lead a, ch a child to the Lord or whether I lead an adult to the Lord, I always ask them. I bring them into the conversation. I make them uh, say my points back to me because, number one, I want them to follow with me. But then, number two, I want to keep them engaged. I don't want them to get bored. Okay? So, first, we're all sinners. So, number one, we're all what? Sinners. Sinners. All right, now number two, it says, because we are sinners, we deserve hell. Now, the verse right here is Romans 6, 23, and it says, for the wages of sin is death. Let's stop right there. Travis, what do you do for a living? Um, a nurse. A nurse? Okay. So, uh, because you do, that's okay. So, you do that, and because you do that, what happens, what do they give you for doing that work? Pay. They pay. That, those are wages, right? So, because you work, you get paid a wage. Well, the Bible says because we are sinners, our wage is death. So we die because of sin. But did you know that the Bible talks about a second death? In fact, here in Revelation 20, 14, it says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So not only do we die physically, in, 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 uh, in after we die physically, then we die spiritually, being cast into the lake of fire, eternally separated from God. So because we are sinners, we deserve to go to this place called hell. We deserve that second death. But look, let's finish this verse. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So let me ask you a question. Do you have to, buy, do you have to work for a gift? No, a gift is free, right? Somebody gives you a gift. It's absolutely free. Jesus wants to give us freely eternal life. But Travis, let me show you something. Let's say there's a Christmas tree right here. And underneath that Christmas tree is a gift. And it's got your name on it. It says Travis right there on the gift. Okay? It's got your name on it. It's under the tree. It's Christmas time. Is that, is that gift yours yet? Not yet. Why? Because you hadn't picked it up yet. It's still under the tree. Man, it can, it can be under that tree with your name on it till the cows come home. But until you accept that gift, it's not yours. Salvation is the same way. Until you accept the free gift of salvation, uh, it's not yours yet. So, number one, we're all what? Sinners. Number two, because we're sinners, we deserve to go where? Hell. Hell. You can point down to, you know, show them where it is. And then number three, it says here that Jesus died on the cross to forgive us of our sins so we, so we won't go to hell. And the verse is Romans 5, 8. But God commandeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know the story of Jesus dying on the cross. Well, see, the reason why Jesus died on the cross is to atone for our sins. You see, God loves us. God doesn't want us to go to hell. So God made a way for us to go to heaven. And he sent his only son who come to this earth 2,000 years ago. He was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He died on a cross as a sacrificial lamb. His blood covers our sin, atones for our sin, and washes our sin away. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Jesus was put in a tomb for three days. And after three days, he resurrected from the dead. And if we put our faith and trust in Jesus and the, and the work that he did on the cross to save us and take us to heaven, then one day, just like Jesus, we will also resurrect from the, from the dead. And that's why Jesus did what he did, because his blood covers and washes away our sin. He took our punishment for us because you know sin has a heavy price to pay jesus took that punishment on himself so number one we're all what sinners. 
Number two, we deserve to go where? Hell. Number three, who died on the cross for us? Jesus. All right, now number four. Jesus will save you and take you to heaven if you ask him to. And I'm going to read one verse. It says, Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's talk about that word, whosoever. Who's that talking about? Everybody, everybody in the whole world. Your you, you, you mammy, your pappy, everybody. Doesn't matter who you are. Everybody in the whole world, doesn't matter what color your skin is, where you're from, what language you speak, what religion you are. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Now, how do we talk to God? Can I pick up a phone and dial 555 God and say, hey, yo, God, what up? Can I do that? No. We sure can. How do we talk to God? Prayer. Prayer. So we pray when we talk to God. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, let me tell you what that verse doesn't say. Doesn't say for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord and go to church. Doesn't say for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord and, and be baptized. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord and live a good life. Doesn't say any of that. Salvation is so simple. You look to God. You confess to him everything that we just went over. You confess to him that you know you're a sinner. You confess to him that you know where your sins will take you. It will take you to a place called hell. You confess to him that you believe in the gospel. That Jesus came. He was born of a virgin. He lived a perfect life. He died on the cross for our sin. His blood forgives our sin. And he was resurrected on the third day. You believe that in faith in your heart. In your heart and you make a decision to make him your personal savior. And that's how you can know 100% that you're going to heaven. So let's go back over this again. Number one, we're all what? Number two, because we're sinners, we deserve to go where? Yeah. Who died on the cross for us? Jesus. Now, if we ask Jesus to come into our heart and save us, will he do it? Yes. Travis, do you want to ask Jesus to save you today, right now? Yeah. Okay, so here, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pray for you. And then when I get done praying, I'm going to give you a prayer. I'm going to, I'm going to say a prayer for you to repeat, okay? But you know how in a wedding, when the preacher says the vows to the bride, okay, he, the, the bride's not talking to the preacher. The bride's talking to the groom. So when I give you these words, you're not going to be just be telling me. You're going, to, you're going to be telling God this. Now, let me also say it's not the prayer that saves you. It's the faith in your heart behind the prayer that saves you. You're actively putting your faith in Jesus to save you. Okay, let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, I pray for Travis, Lord. I pray that you'd be with him today. He has come today. He has seen the scripture. He has made a confession today that he wants to be saved. He wants to be a child of God. He wants to be a Christian. I pray that you'd be with him. Bless him, Lord. Help him right now as he makes the decision to follow you in faith. Now, Travis, with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, if you want Jesus to come in your heart and save you today, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. I want you to say, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I, know I'm a I know I'm a sinner. I know I've broken your law. I know I deserve to go to hell. I know you died on the cross to save me from my sin. I know you rose from the dead. Come in my heart. Save me today. Take me to heaven when I die. I put my faith in you. I believe in the gospel. Save me today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Travis, did you mean that? When you meant that, the Holy Spirit came out of heaven. He came in your heart and he saved you. That instant okay and it's very important you ask that question as soon as they get done praying did you mean that because if they meant it and they were sincere the holy spirit came out of heaven he came inside of them and he saved them that instant now we can and, and for we'll get into baptism later on in this series but this i want to show you this is how I lead somebody to Christ. You can adapt this any way you want to, but this is how someone is, is led to the Lord.